I appreciate the opportunity to come present. Uh, we appreciate your efforts on our draft LCD for varicose veins of the lower extremities. I do represent the American Vein and Lymphatic Society, formerly the American College of Phlebology. It is the largest society devoted to venous and lymphatic disorders, about 2,000 members. Greater than 50% of the physician members are surgeons and interventional radiologists. They're leaders in research and education in, and advocacy. I'm a chairman of the Healthcare Policy Committee, a board member. I've served for more than 20 years in the Care Advisory Committee uh, for Tennessee for Medicare. A lot of experience treating veins. I manage a vein center in a large multi-specialty group in Middle Tennessee. No conflicts to declare. I want to thank you first for proposing to cover cyanocryl adhesive for treatment of saphenous vein reflux. Uh, the three-year data is out there. It's published. Uh, Five-year data will soon be published. And it is uh, on par with thermal ablation in terms of success rates for treating saphenous veins. Uh, you also already, already are covering mechanochemical ablation for saphenous veins. And as I understand it, Varathena, the proprietary foam. And uh, so we're content with that. We think those are modalities that are useful for many patients. We support most of what you have done, but we have some concerns. We're still concerned about the language about conservative therapy. Uh, you say that it must be documented and you say that the components should include and start out with oral venoactive drugs. While venoactive drugs may be used by some and may be beneficial for a few patients for treating edema, for most of vein treatment, they're not that useful, and they're certainly not the standard of care. And I don't think that something that's not a standard of care really should be in language like this. You list weight reduction, daily exercise plan, periodic leg elevation, all those are useful, and they're good, uh, but the language as it's written, I think, sets us up for recovery audit contractor disputes in the future because some of those things are difficult to do. You can't get everybody to lose weight. You can't get everybody exercising. They can't always do elevation. There are a lot of technical reasons they can't, uh, totally aside from their will, but many of them just can't do some of these things, sometimes partially because of their venous problem. Surgical grade compression stockings are listed in this. Well, that's great, but some people can't manage surgical grade compression stockings. They can't manage compression at all because of tenderness. They, some of them need short stretch wraps, some need an inelastic wrap on their leg. And so the language in this uh, creates barriers and problems for us. Symptomatic varicose tributaries, you require that they be treated at the same time or following prior treatment of the saphenous veins. Well, the problem is that not all patients need a saphenous vein to be treated. Certainly there are a fair number of patients who have venous insufficiency that is symptomatic and causes problems in the absence of significant saphenous vein incompetence. And what you do in creating this is incentivize people to treat minimally abnormal saphenous veins that don't need to be treated. As far as perforating veins go, uh, you want to avoid abuse, and I understand that. Your coverage requires prior saphenous vein treatment and failure of an ulcer to heal for at least three months after combined superficial treatment and compression. And it's limited to patients with venous leg ulcers. Well, first, not all patients have saphenous vein incompetence. Venous leg ulcers heal more rapidly with superficial vein treatment. So why would you take a patient who's had everything else done that you can do, who still has significant incompetent perforating vein incompetence that is a significant part of the problem, and make them suffer through another three-month-long delay in treatment while they're going to a wound center spending more money in a week or two than it would cost to pay for the treating the perforator? That makes no sense at all. Uh, we're spending a lot of money in wound centers in this country because we're not getting the treatment some of these people need for their advanced venous insufficiency. Some patients have persisting focal pain and edema with an incompetent perforating vein is the only pathology left in the area in the absence of an ulcer. And if you have focal pain and tenderness with a big incompetent perforating vein beneath it, if you ablate that perforator, you'll solve their problem and you don't give us that latitude. We understand the importance of avoiding uh, unnecessary venous ultrasound studies. We know there's abuse out there. We're doing all we can to help deal with that too. But you allow up to four studies, once per beneficiary within a six-month period. I personally find the language a little confusing. 
I realize most people would think that means uh, four studies in six months. I hope that's what it means, but I don't think it's clear to everyone that that language really means that. This is the most important slide here. Certification for ultrasound is a person-specific certification. ARDMS issues an RVT, a registered vascular technology certification for individuals. Cardiovascular Credentialing International offers an equivalent certification for individuals. These are based on radiology versus cardiology organizations in the past setting these up. But those are equivalent credentials, the RVT and the RVS uh, right here. And they're really for technologists and physicians either one. They're very heavy on the technical side of doing ultrasound. Because a lot of physicians were not willing to do what it took to get these, ARDMS set up an RPVI, the Registered Physician Vascular Interpretation, uh, which is kind of watered down on the technical standpoint, but it's intended for physicians. The problem is you don't recognize the RVS for physicians. You recognize the RVT for technologists. You recognize this for physicians. You don't recognize the registered phlebology sonographer at all. Uh, we in the Venus community saw a need for that. It's the only credential that is specific to Venus ultrasound evaluation. We developed it in partnership with CCI and began offering exams in 2010. We did it because a lot of the people who work in vein centers do not have the experience doing arterial work to qualify to take these exams. Therefore, they were locked out of getting a certification that we encouraged them to have. These exams are relatively little venous coverage in them. This one is a lot of venous with a little bit of arterial and a little bit of vein center management. So it's the most legitimate credential for someone who's doing venous ultrasound in the superficial venous world for sure. And I made sure it has a lot of deep vein work in it as well, including abdominal pelvic work. We really need that to be supported and encouraged by you. Uh, Cahaba, when it was the Medicare contractor for Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia, endorsed it in 2014 as one of their pathways for technologists and physicians. Accreditation for ultrasound is important too. That is a facility specific thing. The two organizations that offer accreditation in venous ultrasound in this country are shown here. This is shown in your document. I can't find anything about this organization having anything to do with venous ultrasound, particularly in the lower extremities. That got in there somehow, it doesn't belong there. And then you have some of these others, these German companies, these are really organizations that do process accreditation and they don't have anything to do with venous treatment in the lower extremities and they're really not legitimate for any kind of standard setting for, for venous ultrasound, which is how they would seem to appear in your document. There are some limitations. You limit the ability of, to treat patients who can't tolerate compression. I believe in compression. I push my patients hard to use compression. There's some that just can't for a lot of reasons. And we shouldn't deny care to those patients if we're doing the best we can to get compression if possible. You don't allow us to treat triple clonane or other congenital venous abnormalities uh, with coverage. Those are often cosmetic when we're born. They don't stay that way. Some of them become very severely symptomatic. With aging and development of venous insufficiency, you get venous hypertension into these things. They get bigger, they hurt more, they become miserable. So you treat the venous insufficiency, that's the source of pressure into them, and then you start treating these. And a lot of them you can treat with ultrasound-guided foam and make a big difference. In the old days, they used to surgically remove these things. Um, one other little issue regards uh, FDA approval for equipment that we use. I pose to you the question, we have laser fibers from two or three companies that are approved for use in saphenous veins, for ablating saphenous veins. There are multiple other laser fibers out there that are generic fibers. Uh, we now have one laser fiber that is FDA approved for use for treating perforating veins. And there are multiple generic fibers out there. From a technical standpoint, there's no reason you can't use these generic laser fibers that are almost identical. Uh, but the question is, are you requiring us to use these fibers that have been specifically FDA approved for use in specific veins or not? Uh, I, I know what the company would say, but the reality is there's a lot of costs associated with these things and we need a decision that makes it clear what you expect us to do. 
Uh, last slide, no more than three sclerotherapy sessions for each leg in patients. Well, some patients need no scleros, some need a little bit, some need a lot. Many will need sclerotherapy again later in life. They'll have progressive uh, venous insufficiency. It's a chronic progressive disease. What's the time frame? Is it three sessions per episode of treatment, three per year, three per lifetime? Uh, your document doesn't say, so we don't know what you mean. We need guidance on these things. We'll give you a lot of detailed, specific uh, uh, um, points and some suggestions in our written comments. Thank you for the opportunity to be here.